Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Now today I want to continue my series. I started a while back about post-processing of images and I actually want to feature an image that I showed to you in last week's video, which is the single tree with the tracked sky background. A lot of people have asked me about these images. I see them as quite a simple composition and yet there's a fair bit that goes into it. And of course, as I demonstrated in last week's video, uh, talking about in the field and I'm, I'm making decisions whilst I'm out there in the field that directly influence how I'm going to be editing the video. So in this video, I'm going to show you the editing side of it, how I went about it, what I did and why I chose particular uh, methods. And so let's get into that and see how we go. Now the editing section of this video is split into two parts. Firstly, as you can see from this image here, this is a single tracked sky exposure and I'm going to be working on that first then I'm going to be working on some light painted foregrounds of the tree itself and you can see some of those here and I'm going to be blending mixing all of these images together so firstly let's go back to that tracked sky this is a single tracked exposure you can see the settings up the top here f 2.8 60 second shutter speed 20 mil focal length at iso 1600 now i haven't done a whole lot of adjustments to this you can see here i've increased the exposure a bit dropped the highlights added some whites go down a little bit further you can see that i've done a little bit of noise reduction plus 20 plus 22 there enable profile corrections and remove chromatic aberration and that is about it that isn't very far removed from how it originally was shot now remember this is shot with a nikon z6 with a hydrogen alpha modification with the nikon 20 mil f 1.8 lens so the next step is to do some editing in photoshop because what i want it to look like is this you can see that is a little more detailed image and if you see the full screen view you can see i've actually done some star reduction but i'm going to show you how i do that and also i've just brought out a little bit more detail in that sky but other than that not a whole lot different to the original shot so i'm not over editing you can see this is the original shot once again so let's start off by opening this in photoshop to do that i'm just going to go down onto that image on the bottom here right click edit in edit in photoshop so as you can see we've opened up into photoshop and here is my image the first thing i'm going to do is duplicate this image i'm going to go up to layer duplicate image and it doesn't matter what we call that and i'm just going to be working on that duplicated one the reason i do this is just to make sure that i've still got an original good copy in case i go crazy and do something uh, incredibly bad with this image uh, I don't expect to do that but you just never know what might happen so this looks good now the very first thing that I'm going to do here is actually uh, separate the nebulosity from the stars and to do that I'm using a plug into Photoshop under filter here go right down to rc astro and it's called star exterminator i've discussed this before in my videos this is a plug into photoshop it is not free so it costs about 50 or 60 dollars i can't remember exactly but it is well worth every cent so i'm going to show you what i do with that in a moment but to start it off i just press ok and we just have to wait it takes a little while to do its work and so we'll come back to that when it's finished working now that does take a little while to go through so you can see the result here and it looks pretty good now what i've effectively done here is taken the stars out of the image and you might wonder well why on earth would you want to do that in the first place well let me explain what i want to do is edit the nebulosity of the scene and you can see it there it looks gorgeous uh, without increasing the brightness of the stars and in fact blowing out the stars because often with a lot of heavy editing stars just blow out and you lose the color you lose the structure you add more noise and this is one way of alleviating that issue now before i do anything i'm going to duplicate this original layer again remember i've still got that original layer underneath there with the stars attached so i'm going to duplicate that layer one more time and this time i'm going to call that stars only because i still need to have the stars in my shot so i've got them there now this one i'm going to call it doesn't really matter but i'll call it starless 
just so we can keep track of all of these layers. Okay, so I've got them all there in a row. Now, the first thing I'm going to do on this stars layer before I go any further is I'm going to click on that, go up to image, go down to apply image, and click here where it says layer. I'm going to select the starless layer and then go down to where it says the blending mode here, change it from multiply to subtract. And you can see I'm just going to leave everything else, the default settings and click OK. And what I've done now, as you can see here, I'll just turn that layer off so you can see, there are my stars, only stars, nothing else. So isn't it pretty smart how you can take the stars out of the top layer? Now, one thing I want to draw your attention to on this top layer, when I zoom in a little bit on that, you'll see a few little artifacts where the stars have come from. This one's not too bad. Now, you know why it's not too bad? That's because I haven't done any heavy editing on it. Uh, the more heavy editing you do, the worse it will become. So uh, let's just go back and um, see what we can do with this image. Now, firstly, what I would like to do, and actually, I'm going to duplicate that layer again. The reason I'm duplicating these layers is simply so that I've got a, a, another one to go back to if I happen to go too far. And, you know, it's really easy when you're editing images in Photoshop to go too far and you think, oh, I've overdone it. I've, it's not what I wanted. So that's the reason I do that. So here we are on this starless layer. I'm going to go up to filter and we're going to go down to camera raw filter. And that comes up with a box here that looks very similar to where I came from in Lightroom. And that's pretty much because it is the same uh, engine that drives both camera raw and Lightroom. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a fair bit of dehaze. And what that effectively does is brings that nebulosity out. But you can see it's also darkened the image and added some uh, blue to the image. So I'm going to increase the exposure a little bit. And also contrast. Contrast makes that nebulosity really pop as well. I'm going to warm up this image fractionally just by putting a bit of yellow or orange into the scene. Not too much because I just I still want to maintain the look that I had originally. Now, perhaps that's a little bit too bright. So I'll just drop the exposure a bit. Or maybe what I might do is drop the highlights because that gives you a similar effect of taking down some of the exposure without losing that nebulosity, which is what I'm effectively after here. That's the whole point of doing what I'm doing here. Um, so you can play around a little bit with this. There's no right or wrong. It just depends what the look is that you're aiming for. Now, I'm looking at this image thinking there's a fair bit of green there. So I'm just going to add a touch of magenta. Now, typically with a Astro modded camera, you're not going to be adding too much magenta to the image because there's already a lot of reds and pinks in the sky. But in this one, I like what that looks like. Yeah, sometimes you just play around a bit with the various sliders. But ultimately, I'm, I'm liking that. I really, really do. So... The other thing I'm going to do, though, is because by adjusting all of this, I'm probably adding more noise. I'm going to go down in here and add some more noise reduction. A, a fair bit, also color noise reduction, because that's often where you will see a difference. Remember, this is nebulosity. It's already a bit hazy and fuzzy. So adding noise reduction, you know, it will take sharpness out. So any noise reduction that we decide to do does de-sharpen a little bit. But I think the trade-off is good as far as getting rid of the noise. So I think I'm happy with that. So let's click OK and see what we end up with. Yeah, that's good. Have a look at that. I really like that. So I haven't done very much, have I? But I want to show you what can be achieved with simple edits. And the whole point of this video is to show you I'm not going to go to a whole lot of effort to make this really pop. I'm only going to do some simple stuff. So remember, this is just the nebulosity with no stars. Now, if I grab that star layer, put it on the top. And one thing I'm going to do is simply adjust the blend mode of that star layer from normal down to color dodge. And suddenly we've got our stars back. But critically, you'll notice that they're not all there. That's been star reduced. And I haven't done any star reduction as such. If I change that from color dodge to, let's say, screen, you can see there's a lot more stars, but still not quite as many as my original picture. Let me just go back to that. This is what the original picture looks like. 
So we'll take that one away and add in my one I've just been working on. And there you have it. It's, it's by definition, by doing this simple edit I just did, I've actually reduced the amount of stars. So let me go from screen back to color dodge. Now, one other thing that I sometimes do is duplicate that layer. So I'm going to do that layer, duplicate. This is the stars again, and they're both on color dodge. And what I've actually done there has increased the amount of stars, but not overly increased. So in other words, I've still got my star reduction without too many of the fainter stars. So I've effectively brought in some of the brighter stars. And the other big benefit of doing this is when I zoom in on the image, you will notice it's nice and clean. I don't have noise in the image. And the stars have actually filled in those gaps where I got them from in the first place. And this is a way of doing, well, well, it's not really strictly star reduction, but it has the same effect as doing star reduction. So let me just blend these three layers together. To do that, I'm going to go to Layer, Merge Visible. And you will see now I've only got one layer. And if I compare that to where we came from, there you have it. It's not a whole lot different. It's different enough. And that's what I'm looking for. That's where we started and that's where we've gone to. And from here, we can adjust a little bit of color in that if we don't think it's to our liking. But what I might do is just leave that there for the time being. I'm pretty happy with that. So what I'm going to do is flatten this image. So I'm going to go to layer, flatten image, discard hidden layers. Yes. Now I'm down to that one image, which is my tracked sky. Now it didn't take long to do that editing because of that plugin. It just adds so much value to the image. So I'm going to save this and then we're going to go back to Lightroom. Okay, so here we are back in Lightroom. Now, what I want to show you here is uh, an image that I shot whilst I was there on location. And this is what I classify as an ambient sky exposure. And the reason I shoot this is because I'm going to be replacing this shot with the one that I just showed you edited in Photoshop. So let's go back a step. Here is my tracked sky. Now you'll notice there's no tree in this shot. And that is because I simply moved in front of the tree to shoot the sky. Because I knew I wanted to put this tree in the frame. And it's so much easier to shoot a tracked exposure without a foreground uh, interruption, if you like. So here we have the, the sky shot with the tree and you can see the Milky Way is in exactly the same position. So I've done a little bit of editing here. You can see to save time, I've added some exposure, dropped some highlights. I've also added some noise reduction in here. Some of you will be thinking, well, why do you bother doing any of this? Because you're not going to use that shot. I'm looking to get an image that is somewhere close to the same luminosity levels and the same brightness. And also it makes it easier because of this tree, which I'm going to be uh, needing to get my replacement sky to sit around and behind to have a, a good contrast there. So that's what I've done. I've added exposure to do that. Now, the other thing I've done here, I shot three or four images of the foreground. And you can see here that these are shot at f5.6, 13 second shutter speeds at ISO 500. And because I've stopped down the aperture and uh, uh, lowered the ISO, I'm not capturing many stars, but I'm getting this nice foreground lighting. You can see the grass there. You can see the tree, nice and sharp. Now, I want to tell you one thing about this. I did not change my focus. So let me just reiterate, this image here is shot at infinity focus. So I'm focused onto the stars. Then I just uh, stopped there my aperture and my ISO did not refocus. Because what happens is when you shoot at uh, f5.6, as I did in this example, I'm creating a wider depth of field. So therefore the tree, which was probably about three or four meters away from the camera and this grass comes into focus. This is critical. And a lot of people don't understand this basic principle of optics. Now, of course, I'm shooting it with a wide angle lens. This is a 20 millimeter focal length. If I was shooting at 35 or 40 or 50 millimeters, this wouldn't happen. I'd have to refocus. But with ultra wide lenses like your 14s, 15s, 16s, 18s, 20 mil, you will be able to get away depending on how far you are from that foreground subject. Okay, so here's a few more shots I took. I lit both sides of the tree. 
I lit the, the, a little bit of the ground at the front there and you can see also uh, yeah, just a couple of shots there. So what I'm going to do and the, uh, and the settings by the way, I've added some exposure, added a bit of clarity into these images, did add some noise reduction as you can see, or not much actually, just a little bit, which I'm going to put in there now, about plus 20. And I'm going to select by holding down control, I'm going to select those images all the foreground images, including that ambient sky image. And I'm going to right click on there, any one of those images, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop, and we'll go back into Photoshop. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop, and you can see the sky layer, which is my background layer, is on the top here. So I'm going to drag that down just by clicking, dragging down right to the bottom of the stack. And now you will see whichever layer is on top. You can see them all listed there. So what I'm going to do initially is select the first four images by clicking on the top one, then holding down shift and clicking on the fourth one. You can see they're all now highlighted. I'm going to go to the blend mode here, which says normal. Click on that and make it lighten. And suddenly you get a, a rough picture of what the final completed image is going to look like. Now there's way too much light on this scene, but it's simply to get us started. So my next method here is to disable those three layers, have the top and the bottom only selected. And essentially what we're looking at here is a light painted layer on top of our background, just one layer. But I need to get rid of the stars in the sky. There's not many there, but I want to get rid of all of those stars. Now, effectively to do that, it's a bit hard to do if I turn that bottom layer off because it's really difficult to see where the stars sometimes start and end on that layer. So what I tend to do is enable that bottom layer, but drop the opacity. So I'll go to here to the opacity level, drop it down to about 40 or 50%, and that makes it easier to see properly around that tree. So let's go back to this top layer, click on the layer, and then go down here onto this little square, which is add layer mask. And a layer mask has now been produced there with a white color. So that's good. Now what I'm going to do is select my paintbrush tool over here and I'm going to make that uh, black. It's already set to black by default. So that's what I want to paint black onto that white and that will rub out areas of my image. So I want to go up here to the paintbrush tool and select a hard edged brush. So it's a hard edge and now I want to make it a fairly large one. And now I'm going to start rubbing it. This is at 100% opacity here. So I've got 100, 100, 100. Everything's on 100. That just makes it quick and easy to rub out the broad sections of the sky rather than trying to be too pedantic at this point in time because I don't need to be. I'm just going to rub out what I need to rub out very quickly. I'll have to zoom in so I can see closer to that tree. So when I'm zoomed in like this, I need to make my brush a lot smaller. So let's just do that. You can see I've done that here. I'm just getting in as close as I can. But as you can also see, I'm not being very fussy about this. So I'm getting in there and I will do this rub around the tree. In fact, what I think I will do to save time on this, I will fast forward through this and we'll come back when I've actually done this. It won't take long. Okay, so you can see here it looks a bit like a dog's breakfast at the moment. Uh, certainly nowhere near a very clean masking job there. But don't you worry about that because what happens here is when I enable this bottom layer back to 100% opacity, have a look at that. Bob is your uncle. Look at that going close and that's a beautiful blend around that tree. Now a lot of people get hung up on this and they cannot understand how this works, but it's quite simple really. It's a lighten blend mode on this top layer. And what that means is it only shows light pixels and the light pixels on that uh, first layer are the lit tree. That's why I rubbed out all of the stars. I don't want them to show through. I just want to see the lit foreground and you can see the grass here, the tree, the, the background that we're looking at here is on this bottom layer. As you can see, that's what I rubbed out. So this is the basis for what I am trying to achieve here. So now that I've got my mask on the top layer, all I'm going to do for all of the other layers is copy that mask by holding down Alt on the keyboard, dragging it down, and that copies it to each subsequent layer. And it's a lot quicker than having to do that more than one time. Now you can see, here's me. I've got in the shot again. There's my, my uh, flashlight there lighting up this foreground. Now, 
as I said at the beginning, I'm not going to be using every layer here, I don't think. I might use bits and pieces from some of the layers, but I think it's overlit. For example, this shot here, I think there's it's nearly unnecessary, but I'll have a good look at the other layers and just see what I've got. That one, a bit the same. But I do like that one. So I'm sort of going to use bits and pieces here. I'm going to go down to this layer here, click on my layer mask, grab my brush tool again. This time I'm going to use a soft brush. Click on soft brush, make it a bit bigger, and I'm going to rub out that, that light. And you can see what happens here. I'm not rubbing out anything that the light is shining on because that's the tree here, but I'm just rubbing out the actual light source itself. And if I disable that layer, you can see what he's done. Now there's a hot patch on the, on the ground here, which I don't like. So what I'm going to do is rub that out as well. See, it's disappeared. It looks much better now. Also, this tree, this little tree that's next to the big tree, I don't want to highlight that. So I'm just going to rub the light off from that tree. It's there, but I'm not highlighting it. I like that. I really, really do. So essentially what I've got there is two layers. This top layer here is mostly lighting the, the foreground here. And the second layer there is mostly lighting the tree. And I like the way the light is falling off across the tree. And to help that a little bit, what I might do is just go to this layer here and gently rub out some of the light that's on this side of the tree. Now, this second layer is lit from that side of the tree. But you know what? I don't want all of that. I like it a little bit more subtle. So what I'm going to do is go into this layer here, get myself a fairly large brush, gently attack this bit of the ground here, rub out a lot of the light that's on the tree, and let's see what we've got there. Yeah, that's not too bad. I'll, I'll rub out some of the spillage over here. But essentially what I've done there is just added just a little bit more light there into this part of the foreground. The tree looks good. Now that third layer, what does that do? Well, it's, you know, to be honest, I think it's doing way too much. Um, you, you can decide, you know, this is the good thing about this technique. You can decide what you want if you need any of that, or you might say, look, I really don't need much of that. But what I'm going to do here is select that layer and rub out most of it and just see what happens. I might just leave a little bit there. Uh, just make my picture a bit smaller so I can get into the scene a bit better. And sometimes what I will do is go in and adjust a little section of the image back with my brush and paint it back in again. So for example, let me just have a look and see if I can find a, a section that I think needs to be rubbed back in. I mean, to be honest, I, I don't mind any of that. But let's just have a look here. Yeah, so this one here, for example, I'm going to rub out the trunk of that tree. So uh, let's go back to a smaller brush because I don't want, I want the light to look more coming from the left-hand side of the scene. And you know why I do that? It's because the major part of my Milky Way galactic core is on the left of the tree. And I want to give a subliminal uh, impression, and there's light over here as well, that the light on the tree is actually coming from here. Now, we know it's not, but when you look at the overall image, that's the impression I want to give. So, uh, that's good. That's good. I don't mind that. Look, to be honest, that, I don't know if that's doing anything, and I might just forget that for the time being, because I don't think it's adding to the image much at all. Uh, that one, yeah, perhaps a little bit. I, I don't mind that one. I'll probably, um, I don't know take a bit out of that tree there again, but I don't mind having a little bit in this center section. Now, if I want to add some more into it, I'll just turn this to white over here and perhaps paint a little bit back in. Now, that could be too much. If it's too much, you just rub it back and play with it. You know, this is the advantage of using layer masks. It's a non-destructive workflow. Okay, so once we get our picture to this stage, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put these layers all into a group. So I'm going to select them by holding shift on the keyboard. They're all selected except that bottom layer. Drag it down to this little square down the bottom, which effectively makes that into a group. You can see it there, group one. Now what that does do is change the blend mode to pass through. I don't want pass through. I want it to be lightened. Remember we set it to lighten. So I'm going to go back in and make it lighten again. This is a step that a lot of people don't actually notice changing. For some reason it changes by default in Photoshop. So I'm going to 
uh, deselect that group layer. Now we're just looking at the background layer. And you know why we're doing this? Because I want to do a sky replacement of that to the image that we shot at Tracked Image. So uh, by uh, disabling the group, the foreground light painting, I can actually see clearly the outline of the tree and what I'm doing with that. So I'm going to go uh, up to Edit and go down to Sky Replacement and click on that and we shall see what happens here. Okay, so you can see what's happened here. It's brought in a sky, but that's not the sky I took. This is a separate image I took of another uh, scene. So I've got to select the sky that I took. So I'll go up here into this little arrow, go down, and I've got lots of, lots of images in here that I've been working on over the journey. But this here is the one I want to use. So I'll click on that one and you will see that that sky will then appear into my scene. And there it is. That's the one I'm looking for. So before I click OK down here, I don't want to do that yet because I want to go in and have a look at this scene and make sure that I'm happy with everything. Now, the sky itself is great, okay? I can adjust brightness, I can adjust temperature and color, etc. And I can still do that later on as well. So that is not going to be an issue at all. The placement of where that sky is perfect. So there's no problem with that. But what I do want to have a look at is whether this tree is blended properly and whether the foreground is blended properly. It looks okay, but uh, I'll zoom in a little bit. So the tools here in this sky replacement panel, this at the bottom is a magnifying glass and it gives you the option to zoom in or zoom out. So if I just click on the image like this, I'm zooming in and then I can have a look and just see. Now you can see here, it looks pretty good. I mean, overall, that's done a magnificent job of selecting the foreground. And you know why it's done that? It's because it can see what's foreground and what is background. That's really vital for this to work properly. So these little leaves of the tree, some of them, let's have a look at the top there. Some of them are, look, I'm going right into pixel level here. So, uh, but some of them are a little bit soft. Now I might click the fade edge and push it right over to the edge. That doesn't seem to have done much. I can change the shift edge and that will see how it disappears or reappears. So it's a matter of finding a balance where you think it should be. So let's just go to fill screen again while we're doing this, because what happens is invariably you will find that if you if adjust this shift edge, you'll see it adjusts the foreground too much down at the bottom there. Um, so what it did when it defaulted, it went to about zero. And you know, it's done a pretty good job at zero to be honest with you. Uh, so what I might do is simply go in using the zoom function once again. So zoom in to the top of these trees because it gives you some uh, ability to edit this image a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on this second icon, which is a brush tool. Click on the minus and uh, then change my brush size to a very small brush. And you can see you can actually add... Uh, darkness into these images here. So I'm going to do a little bit of that whilst it's out here in these outer edges. Uh, this, I want to do it now rather than later because I want to do it now because I can see what this is going to look like. So I'm just going to add these. I'm just going to go over the, the branch, these little exterior bits here that are a bit hard to get to. So bear with me while I do this and I might, again, I'll fast forward through this because it is a little bit tedious, especially on an image like this. But I can tell you, it is well worth doing. Okay, so I've gone down and it's effectively just darkened some of these edge leaves that were a little bit shadowy. They were still there, so I just uh, brushed over them gently. And you can see that that has made that a beautiful silhouette. And that's perfect for what I want to do. So I'll just fill the screen. You can see there, uh, I'm happy with that. I haven't done very much. All I've done is added a little bit and made sure that this mask is a bit solid. It looks fantastic. You can even see the grass there in the foreground silhouetted. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to click OK and we'll go back to our image. You can see now that the sky replacement has all of this group has been added and you can see what happens when you do certain things. Now that there, I don't know what that, it's a foreground something or other, but I'm going to unclick that because I like it better without that. Now if this is where it looks absolutely stunning. When I add the group back in, there is our beautiful foreground. Have a look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? 
And what happens is, because remember, these foreground images which are hidden, contained within this group here, have the light and blend mode attached, which means that when you apply that group, that you will see the lit images superimposed over the top of a dark silhouette. The dark silhouette is very important for all of this to work. So you'll remember that my original layer, let me just turn off some of this stuff so you can see it. My original layer, that's what it looks like, is a dark silhouette. This is my ambient sky shot. When I add in my sky replacement, there it is. Now it's in exactly the same place. It may have moved a fraction because of the difference in time between the tracking and the non-tracking, as you can see there, but it hasn't moved far. It's almost in identical position. And then when we add our group for our foreground lighting, have a look at that. Isn't that just so gorgeous? Now, if I zoom in, I'll show you what it looks like when we're a bit close up. Have a look at the clean mask around that tree. And we've got our background sky behind it. It looks so natural, so clean. Stars look great. Foreground looks great. No added noise. We've got gorgeous detail in that nebulosity in the Milky Way galactic core there. Have a look at that. Isn't that just stunning? So I hardly have to do anything else to this image. So what I typically do is flatten this image. Now, a lot of you will have heart attacks when you see me flatten the image, I know, because once I flatten the image, I can't adjust any of these parameters any further. Uh, speaking of which, if I wanted to adjust parameters, I can still do that. I can go to my, for example, my sky layer here, and I can add a curves adjustment to that if I wanted to uh, by just clicking on that. Now, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to do this, but you can see what that, that curves adjustment does. It's only adjusting the background sky, which actually doesn't look too bad. Uh, that was just a real quick stab in the dark. So see what I've just done there? I've adjusted the sky, but that does not impact on the rest of the image. It's only adjusting the sky, for example. Now I can do that here in Photoshop before flattening the image. What I'm going to do now is flatten that image. So bear with me guys, because I know some of you get really nervous when I do this, but I'm gonna to go to layer, flatten image. It's gonna ask me if I wanna discard any hidden layers because there's one there. I'm gonna click okay. And you will see now we have one layer, one single layer. That is my final product. Have a look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? So what I'm going to do now is simply click out of Photoshop, uh, click yes on that and go back to Lightroom. So here we are back in Lightroom. I'll just go full screen so you can see what it looks like. Isn't that just gorgeous? Now, one thing I did apply here in Lightroom, I'll just show you that, is a radial gradient vignette. So up in the masking options, you can see it here where I've already done it, but I'll show you what I did. It's just a radial gradient. And if I click on that, you can actually see it. I've twisted it around a little bit. And I do this often because what I want to do, this is a vignette. So what I've done is just darken the edges of the frame and drop the exposure by 1.31 here. And I've, I've twisted it around by grabbing hold of these tools here. You can twist it around to make it look a little bit more like the light is actually coming from this direction to light that tree. Now, I mentioned this before, but you know, there's a lot of subliminals and I call them one percenters in our nightscape photography. One percent plus one percent plus one percent. Eventually, they add up to a large percentage and it just adds a, just that little bit more drama to the image. So that was just a uh, radial gradient vignette. And there you have it, one single tracked exposure for the sky and three or four layers for the foreground. And I think I threw one of those layers away, didn't use it at all. You could probably nearly get away with just two layers for the foreground and have a look at that. It's simplicity, it's a tracked image, beautiful detail in that background. And if you look at my video from last week, you will see how I shot this in the field and what I was thinking, because I'm always thinking in the field when I'm shooting, how am I going to edit these images? So I hope you found this fairly straightforward. It's a reasonably simple edit considering the end result, which I am absolutely happy with. So once again, I really appreciate you tuning in 
to watch this video and follow along with some of my editing tips and, and techniques. There's plenty of ways of editing these Nightscape images and this is not the only way, it's just the way that I like to approach it. So if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and maybe a, uh, subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more of this content. I've got plenty more of this content on the way. So until the next video, you guys have an absolutely fantastic week.